just to give the viewers kind of an idea of what we're looking at. Obviously, this is not financial advice at all. Um, you know, some of the other guys on other streams trade on the live stream. I know you do that as well, James, but you know, I personally, since I'm not trading options at the moment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm fully invested in crypto, I thought it would be good to kind of go over, you know, portfolio performance, weights, all that good stuff. So my good sir, Oksana is a small Solana project, um, essentially a decentralized GPU uh protocol so you can go rent uh, cloud space there it's decentralized we can get into the specifics later but it has been freaking through the roof it's up 30 percent today um it's really tripled over the last like month so it's been my top performer by far and as such uh has contributed to a higher weight in my portfolio so i'm definitely gonna have to readjust there uh at some point but it has been really killing it we can take a look at the charts in just a moment uh, so that's 32% of my portfolio at the moment, and it's up 29% today. So cannot complain about that. Uh, largest holding has had the largest gains over the last couple of weeks. So very, very happy about that. Uh, we'll see. I'll have to see how I kind of readjust. So you got 32% Nosana, 14% AVAX, 13% in Stacks, near what's MSC? That's actually an important point because I think a huge – I mean, a potential narrative moving forward. I mean, this is one of the reasons that Stacks is such a large portion of my portfolio. I mean, we've seen kind of what's happened with ordinals. I think there's a lot of value capture potential in Bitcoin, um, like in terms of layer two building on top of Bitcoin um, that a lot of people, I mean, obviously it's like a lot of people are talking about it, but um, there's some projects here that make for interesting Kind of narratives i'm moving forward uh for building on top of bitcoin so stacks is one of them and that's kind of why it's my top three and it's been doing pretty well over the last like three months so uh i think it's tripled so that's that's pretty nice but i decided to throw on monthly, porf monthly portfolio performance too uh i've just had an absolutely blowout for months i really doubt that this is going to continue but yeah uh very blessed for that uh which makes me a little scared because you know if i've had four great months i uh if my luck is out here boy mm. and nothing goes up for four months straight does it uh, well. my question is where did you buy some of these smaller cryptos that you're talking about some gaming protocols like beam uh what was the other one beam i don't even i so i bought beam probably four months ago it's it's uh it was merit circle before they had their switch uh, I think I swapped it on Uniswap. See, a lot of these smaller market cap uh, cryptos with smaller um, footprints can kind of throw off the uh, average person getting into crypto because they have to go through nefarious exchanges or do something that they might not be comfortable with. If we can keep um, our cryptos centralized and on exchanges, which cryptos are you looking at the most right now? Um, honestly, like I've kind of flipped, I've kind of flipped from like that, just the main, main players that are listed. I don't know. I guess it just has to do with my risk appetite, but I've definitely, um, definitely kind of shifted my focus on some of these up and coming projects that whether it be on Solana where you need to swap on Jupiter or, uh, some of these smaller ETH projects that I just use Uniswap for, um, yeah, I don't know. I've, I've kind of shifted my focus just given my risk appetite for playing into some of these narratives that are a lot smaller uh, in, in, term, I mean, in, in terms of these project sizes. So, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question, but definitely not something that I'm totally focused on right now. Like I kind of have my my AVEX, my stacks, my Merit Circle near kind of those layer ones, gaming protocols that have grown and I'm kind of just leaving them there. And then some of the other guys, I'm dipping my toes into uh, some of these, some of these dexes, swapping there. Yeah, um, but that's just my take. So, um, so let's hop into some charts, James. I want to take a look at. Obviously, there's been a lot of market volatility over the last really couple of weeks as GPTC has been unloading a shit ton of. I'm going to call this segment like the general health checkup. I think it, it would be good to, uh, to kind of focus in on that every week 
as we're kind of reviewing what's going on in the space. See if we can get that thrown up. We're gonna hop over to Coin Glass, take a look at Bitcoin future. So Bitcoin just touching forty two thousand after two weeks of just ugly sell offs. Really more than two weeks. Uh, <coughs> yeah, really since I mean obviously since the uh, the Bitcoin news, but. You know, I like to take a look at some of the nitty gritty things on chain cumulative volume delta. That's going to tell us the difference between buyers and sellers. Uh, I like to take a look at funding rates and then obviously open interest. So, um, you know, as we can see, a lot of people moving down into the 40 range were opening shorts. Um, we can see this obviously by the open interest uh, spikes. So from low 70s up to high 70s, close to 80,000 in open interest for and again, this is only on Binance, so it may vary depending on the exchange. But nonetheless, I think it's important to take a look at some of this stuff because, um, yeah, I mean, funding rates for sure, it's kind of got heated up here. So it's definitely watching that. I'm not really sh trading short term, but I think it's interesting to watch nonetheless uh, just to kind of get an idea of what the market is doing. So, man, when the markets are hopping into shorts, you know, I got to be contrarian there. So. As we can see, kind of got a good amount of liquidations. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, it's pretty small relative to what we saw here um, the last couple of weeks. But nonetheless, how much liquidation happened on the day of the fake SEC announcement? Oh, a lot. Let's see if we can uh, get to that. What was that? That was January, January 8th or 9th. Yeah, right here. A lot. Uh, I'm pretty lot sure. Liquidations. I'm pretty sure there was like. I don't want to butcher this, but there was like close to a billion dollars. Uh, uh, again, I don't want to butcher that. I'd, you know, again, and then we got money. duped on stream by Rollbit, thinking yeah. somebody made a twenty-five x play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or but it was. Yeah, nonetheless, selling pressure over the last like couple of weeks has been very, very strong, and obviously, I think that's fueled by GBTC. A lot of people are getting kind of shaken up by that um we can take a look at some of those numbers as well but yeah gbtc is down uh i think they've sold 10 percent of their total bitcoin holdings in the last couple of weeks so uh pretty significant stuff what do you think about doge as a play here doge is a play i don't know uh, again like i'm i think in terms of narratives the meme coin narrative is hot right now on Solana. So if you're looking into Doge, you might as well kind of go into the rabbit hole and find meme coins on Solana. Dog with hat. Dog with uh, hat is a is is a project on Solana. Yeah, dog with hat is a big project that has been doing crazy numbers. We can look into that, but um, I don't know. I wanted to look at this: the Grayscale Investment Bitcoin Holdings. I mean, it's been plummeting. I think they're down. Yeah, they went from like six hundred thousand to 512,000. So like 100,000 Bitcoin offloaded in the last couple of weeks. I think that's oh, wow. more than 10% of their holdings. Um, yeah, it's interesting to see like that occurring whilst we're getting some good inflows on other ETFs. So I'm kind of interested to think about maybe why that is the case. I mean, if we take a look at some of these other numbers from the other ETFs, we can see that yeah, for the most part, like most of these ETFs have had inflows while Grayscale, major outflows. I think that has to do something with the premiums. I'm not too sure. I know Grayscale had negative premiums for a long time and finally came back to positive. So maybe people are taking advantage of that. Major, There's a major ARB opportunity and they're kind of just cashing out now. So I don't know, but yeah, definitely a lot of pressure on the market here. For the, for the most part, I think we'll see what happens, obviously. But it seems like most of the selling is out. And honestly, I love the way that the market reacted to this. I mean, we had a 20% drop from the ETF news. But, I mean, right now it seems that, A, like funding has reset. So not a lot of futures trading going on, which is great because no liquidation cascades. And then also, yeah, I don't know, price is just kind of held up at 40000 so I think as a psychological level, that's pretty important. And yeah, um, getting ETF approval at this 40,000 area and then just kind of like a little bit of volatility around this area, but kind of like solidifying 40K as a point of, like you said, psychological support. 
and we're starting to make a move higher, especially today. Um, it just propagates the future gains for Bitcoin. We're, I mean, we're up like five percent a day, which is quite quite a big jump. But um, yeah, let's take a look at it. Yeah, we can see it. Uh, I could definitely see like cool off coming a little bit. Uh, no, not, not, like, not like a cool off, like downwards, just maybe like sideways, you know, like ha have it float a little bit sideways right around 42 and then make some moves higher a little bit later on. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm in the boat of like people are really underestimating. I mean, from what the data shows right now, like the impact of inflows into some of these ETFs. I mean, there's a lot of demand. I think a lot of people have been shocked by the amount of demand. Um, which, in my opinion, is a conduit for maybe an ETH ETF and then a Solana ETF, some of these other players. But, I mean, the market is up big time. Let's look at Solana, for instance. I mean, bouncing off of like $81, $82 beautifully all the way up to 93 I mean, a beautiful 20% bounce like that man, doesn't get any better. Uh, just seeing that reaction after just a slow bleed from 125 so yeah we're 20 percent off the lows there near i saw a bounce pretty beautifully man i was really tempted to get in here with some leverage positions but uh but i did not unfortunately mm -hmm. uh, but yeah beautiful bounce there of like 20 something percent 20 percent on near I mean, just the entire market cap seems to be bouncing at a very, very interesting level. Like, this is beautiful. This is textbook TA. If that's what you like, this is it right here. Uh, I don't know, man. This looks beautiful. If we can continue here, like, I, this is going to be a point where we look back and be like, that was very clean. Very clean bounce. Buyers are stepping in at these ranges. And then that's also in correlation with the, the stock market at all-time highs. So... It's kind of hard to see where the bear narratives are. Um, oh, you, you're only seeing Solana. But I was showing this beautiful, beautiful bounce. Uh, look at that. Look at that, James. Is that not just – my OCD is just like mm, beautiful. Mm, yes, technical analysis. Technical analysis right there. Solana at $93. <coughs> Solana at 